Hi, this is Phil Newman from Longevity Technology, and today I'm joined by Haim Cohen, who's the Chief Scientist of CertLab in Israel. Haim, how are you? Good, how are you? Yeah, great, Haim. And obviously, the, the, the work that you guys are doing in Cert6 is, is fascinating. So I think it would be very helpful, if you can, to just maybe explain really what Cert6 is and, and what it's linked to human longevity is all about. Okay. So Cert6 is a protein. And in terms of longevity, I would say this is the main regulator of healthy lifespan, the main regulator of longevity. The reason why we focus on 36 is originally we found that 36 level increase under calorie restriction. It's a procedure, I think, that everybody from the audience of you knows that can extend lifespan. And he found that the level of 36 increase by calorie restriction, it was, it was in human uh, tissue culture, in, in mice, in rat. And what we did next, we ask, okay, if cert six level goes up, maybe cert six mediate the effect of calorie restriction. So what we did, we generated mice that overexpress cert six, and indeed these mice live thirty percent at average more than regular mice, and they have a long list of a phenotype or effect, positive effect that basically extend healthy lifespan. So, so obviously, the potential of Cert six to uh, combat aging is uh, is is very interesting. So, how how does it work in terms of uh, combating aging and improving health span? Okay, so this, this is a long list of things that Cert six is involved. Yeah. First, I can tell you what what we found in mice. Then I will move to human, and then also we mentioned some results that we found, and also new Brazil I found in humans showing that Cert six activity is really increase in people who reach age 100 and more, suggesting that it's regulating longevity. So our mice, when you over, and also other people, when you overexpress 36, it protects you against obesity, it protects you against the increasingly lipid as you age, it protects you against change in, a, in, a, in a blood biochemistry, it, changed the, it protects you against cancer, we, we saw that there was much less cancer, it's also involved in a, in a neuronal disease like Alzheimer. We know that in human, there are specific mutations in 36 that are connected to the development of Alzheimer. It's involved in so many things. Actually, if you look, check every hallmark of aging, almost every hallmark of aging, 36 is involved. So it has a huge effect on longevity. As I said before, in human, we, Neil Barzillai published a paper showing that there is a specific variant of cert six showing the increase in activity of cert six that is happen only in people that live up to 100 and when we age for example the level of cert six decline or the activity of cert six decline meaning that if we will boost this activity increase the level of cert six we can get all the beneficial effect that we got as we did in the mice actually we mimic or replicate the effect of color restriction we show it by many methods so obviously, um, Cert Lab is named after uh, the work that you're doing with Cert Six. So tell me, what 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 is the the organization actually working on at the moment? Okay, so we develop methods to activate or slash increase the level of Cert Six. We have several uh, type of drugs that we develop. Some of them are small molecules. Some of them are mere dependent. But the major uh, drugs that we develop is the major set of drugs, we have several drugs that we develop, are using the mRNA of 36, we cover it with the lipid nanoparticle, and now we can inject it, and it's which, for example, the liver, and we, we show already that if you enrich, you in, inject it to the mice, and you create a NASH, or you create liver diseases, it's reversed the effect, and it's going back to normal liver after three weeks. It also saves them from dying from high fat diet, Another phenotype is improve the kidney activity. And so we have a set of uh, methods or drugs that we develop. Each of them will be at the end targeted to a different tissue. For example, if we want to reach the brain, we create nanoparticles can reach the brain for Alzheimer. And by this, we can uh, treat different age-related diseases. Yeah, I mean, it's fascinating. I mean, uh, like like so many organizations, the, the opportunities that you have from your sort of base discovery and, and your platform it really is, is fascinating that you can go to so many different diseases. And I, I do remember from your uh, from your deck, Haim, you know, the amazing uh, 
treatment uh, difference between uh, the liver samples that were from you know, pre and post uh, treatment. So uh, what, what results have you actually been seeing so far with the work you're doing in the lab? Okay, so, uh, regard, uh, I will ignore the results that we got in uh, mice that overexpress RTC. So we speak about result in, um, but it's also important. We mentioned one more, one more result. I think it's extremely important. We showed already that in mice that overexpressing 36, you basically block frailty syndrome. Frailty syndrome, it's a phenomenon that affects at age 65, 5% of the population. Some people is the 10%, age 80, 30% of the population. And actually, this is how we imagine all the individual. If you are frail, it means that you walk slower, you are exhausted, you, you're losing your weight, even if you don't want to lose your weight. So this is how we imagine old person. It's basically equal to frailty syndrome. When we overexpress 36, we basically block the frailty of this mice as the age. Suggesting that we can also do it in human, and we maybe say a few words about it later, but what our target in human? Frailty is definitely one of the targets that we go in, in human. So besides this, we also took mice and we created models of, for example, NASH and, and, a, and alcoholic and a fatty liver, inject 36, and so inject our drug and restore the, the liver back to the condition of healthy liver. We also did it for several months. After several months under this condition, mice start to die and our mice survive, simply like this. Also, we follow the kidney. The kidney was, we follow mark of the health of the, health of the kidney. We maintain healthy kidney. We check the lipid, the amount of lipid in the serum or other serum marker. It's maintained normal serum in comparison to the sick animal that got the, the control drug. The, the activity of this mice, the, drug, the mice that didn't get the drug were exhausted. Our mice were active. So it's a long list of phenotypes that we got in our mice when we inject the, the drug that is targeted to the liver. Yeah, and I guess it's um, obviously uh, liver is one of the things that you are primarily focusing on. But of course, um, when we've spoke, spoken with CertLab in the past, uh, you have really stated that you guys are very much focusing on longevity as a, as a corporate strategy, oh. which, is, which is fascinating. Our main target is longevity. Our main target is to extend healthy longevity or healthy lifespan. Longevity by itself, it's healthy lifespan. This is the target. So we have aimed to, to treat frailty. We aim to improve healthy liver of, of old age. We aim to increase longevity. This is our main target. Yeah. At the same time, we also target it to specific uh, uh, target like liver disease and uh, joint disease, inflammation in the joint, Alzheimer's in the future, because as I told you before, cert 6 have a significant positive effect against Alzheimer. So this is, uh, we have a list of targets that we plan to target it in the future. Yeah, great. Well, obviously, uh, Jaime, you guys are at uh, a preclinical stage at the moment. So, so really, what are the next steps for CERT Lab? Okay, so the next step in the coming, in the near future, we're going to do two main experiments. One is to do the safety experiment in monkeys, because we want to see that if we inject the drug to monkeys, nothing happens, so we can move to phase one in humans. This is a very important stage that we're going to do very soon. The second uh, experiment that we're going to do is to take even older mice and inject them the drug and see what's happened when you're old, when you're very old mice or Old mice, when you inject the, the drug, if you can now improve the symptoms, because before we did it in mid age and we did, and we follow when we did overexpression across the, the life of the mice. Now I want to take the mice, allow them to develop age related diseases, inject the drug and see what's happened. So it's the two main target of the near future. Of course, next, at the middle of 2024, once we finish it, we're going to move to phase one and so on. Great. Well, uh, wonderful to hear, Hyman. Uh, the work you're doing is, is fascinating. So best of luck with the next clinical stage, and we look forward to catching up with you guys in the future. Thank you. Thank you very much for the opportunity to interview. Great. A pleasure, Hyman.